Hi there and welcome back to Japan and to a slightly different type of video today. You can tell it's different because I'm presenting it from the front room instead of my usual studio. Um, yeah, so uh, that's just that's, that's my way of visually representing that. But realistically what this is, is anyone who's been following the channel for a while knows that for the next couple of weeks I am a little bit busy and not able to do as many of the normal types of reviews as I want to because I've got two projects I'm working on, big projects at the moment. One is directing a CM, a commercial for a company, and the other one is putting together a video, that, a big video for this channel which we've been trying to get completed for over a year now. So uh, yeah, I've decided to really focus on those and it means that uh, I wasn't able to do as many of the normal reviews at the current moment, but I still had some things I wanted to talk about and a lot of these stem from conversations I've had with you guys in YouTube comments or on our Discord. Um, all the social media is linked in the description below as usual. But um, we have some great conversations on there. And so I wanted to take some time out of the occasional day to sit down and discuss these uh, things and see if we can get a bit of interesting conversation, see what people on the YouTube comments might be able to see and what they think about these things. Um, anyway, one of the, com uh, well, the topic that came up last night, which I found particularly interesting, uh, and before I tell you what it is, I'm just going to be sipping from, not, not sponsored, but from my little Gudetama cup, where my coffee is. Someone gave this to me to try and limit the amount of coffee I drink. They were like, you need a child's cup. All it does is make me refill more. Where was I? So the conversation we were having was about the idea of um, what is wasted potential and what has impact in a sound. You know, what basically is a sound? Yeah, and, and this is interesting because different sounds appeal to different people. And the primary person I was speaking to, one of our main followers, I don't, I don't mention people's names on the YouTube videos because I haven't got their permission, but um, he's basically our primary guy. He's our top guy, runs our Reddit and everything, but he has like totally different tastes from me in most things. However, we both love the band Bandmade, um, and I really love the band Wagaki Band. As always on this channel, we're very honest about things. We try to see the positive and negative. We don't just kiss ass on anything. And so these are two bands who I absolutely love, but we will be talking about them from a, an honest standpoint. So if you're someone who's easily offended when someone doesn't just kiss up to a band, probably leave now. So um, we were talking about those two bands. And it started with us talking about Wagaki Band and the fact that he has always said that he feels they have a lot of wasted potential, but he also mentioned that he feel, feels that they don't have any impact in their sound, which really shocked me. I'm thinking, Wagaki Band's a band who just sound like pure impact all the time. Uh, but then I went away and I thought about it. And I had some listen after, because although I don't agree with him on most things, he, he, he justifies his opinions well, usually. Um, and I went away and I listened to it, and I could kind of see the point where Gaki Band don't always have a lot of impact, primarily, not so much because their music isn't big and impactful, but because the fact there's so much going on all the time. It's not like when you have a three-piece band who they can just do something where it's just stabs of energy because the sound is so um, direct. The, just all the instruments are kind of louder in the mix because there's less competing for the sound. Um, and, you know, this music's simpler, so the gaps are less filled in. Um, I say simpler not as an insult to the writing, but, you know, obviously the, the arrangements are simpler, should I say. So, I could see his point there. Um, and he was mentioning that he just feels that Wagaki Band were kind of limited on their sound, limited on what they could do, because it kind of felt like they were recycling the same thing over and over again. Now that brought me to an interesting point. Um, bands do kind of get stuck in a sound based on what their arrangement is. Um, and this is where I brought in the idea of Bandmade. Now Bandmade, like I said, another band who I really love, but their sound pretty much throughout all of their songs is your sort of core rock sound. You know, they have guitars, bass, drums. They sound like a rock band. Um, with exception to Start Over, which obviously people don't like me talking about. Sorry for that brief cut. The dogs were howling. I had to calm them down. Anyway, what was I talking about? So yeah, Bandmade have like a core sound as a rock band. And as a result, that is the same palette that they use pretty much throughout all of their songs. Now, obviously, we've heard them change that more recently with the most recent album. I, I really loved the fact that on Conqueror, they were doing different sounds with the guitars. They were doing some really interesting vocal layering. Um, however, this was all just sort of adaptations of what they basically do. Um, and I tend to find that most rock bands are kind of impervious to any accusation of not changing their sound because it's almost a badge of honor to always be rock, to be rock throughout. And there's nothing wrong with that. And yet, if there's groups who are doing, or bands or artists who are doing something very different, a different sound, 
often they're told, oh, you always do the same sound, in a way that you would think would be equally level levelable against a rock band, but seems not to be for some reason. Um, an example I often use is uh, Nakata Yasutaka, the producer for Kari Pami Pami, for Perfume. He's often accused of, well, all of his songs kind of sound the same. Um, but I tend to find that he's just working from the same palette, in the same way that a rock band would. So uh, that is an interesting point. But then you look at Wagaki Band, so I'm using them as the counter here. Obviously, they have more sounds and they're always working from the same palette. So I think that it's fair to say that I, I personally don't have a problem with them always kind of sounding like Wagaki Band because that's just their sound in the same way that um, Band Made always sound like Band Made, but that's kind of forgiv forgivable because of the fact that you just say, well, that's just, they're a rock band. Um, there is no equivalent uh, defense for Wagaki Band. You can't say, oh, they're just playing that style. It's like, well, they, they always sound that they'd... Uh, the word actually came up last night, I can't remember who, was, who mentioned it, but they said their gimmick, the idea of their sound of fusing uh, Japanese uh, traditional music with contemporary rock is kind of a gimmick. Um, I personally totally disagree. I, I really... Um, I love the, the sound they go for. I think that, like I say, it's a sound that I just personally have believed even before I heard the band is one that just works. The idea of fusing traditional Japanese instruments that tend to have quite a sharp, precise sound with modern contemporary faster rock music. It just works perfectly. So for me, it was interesting hearing the idea that Wagaki band just doing the sound that is natural to their particular roster, their particular lineup, is seen as something of a gimmick. Whereas Bandmade doing the sound that is natural to their lineup is not seen as a gimmick because we already accept that as rock. Um, and the other thing which came up was the idea of wasted potential. And I think the reason this was said, and I do kind of get this, is that no one uh, in Wagaki Band, with exception obviously to Yuka Sozahana as the lead singer, really gets much of a chance to stand out and shine in a sort of virtuoso way because they're all sort of playing in between and around each other. I, again, I, th I have no problem with that. I think that's a perfectly valid way of doing things. Um, I tend to think of maybe the good comparison is if you listen to an orchestra where everyone's playing, you know, big classical orchestra, everyone's playing together, um, and they're all fantastically, well, they should be fantastically talented musicians. You don't say that they've all got wasted potential because none of them are having a chance to really stand out. You say they're fantastic because of the way they're playing together. It's that unity, it's the fact that their skill is in the way that they've, you know, managed to uh, play so beautifully together. And I think that that is the way I look at Wagaki Band. I don't see any uh, lost potential. I, if anything, I see that they've um, become stronger than the sum of their parts. Uh, you know, I, I've often said that I am not a big fan of bands who have like big guitar solos and sort of say, well, that, that's just a thing that we do. Band made are an exception uh, because I think they write it nicely in their songs a lot of the time. But even with band made, I think sometimes there'll be a guitar solo where I think, oh, you could have done a more interesting bridge there. But when when you're hearing um, sort of one member doing a solo, it's fine. But I do think it's more interesting to hear a whole band working together and doing something, which is often why the best guitar solos for me are the ones where the backing is shifting around and moving to accent the guitar solo. The worst ones are the ones where um, they just, you know, the other members just play the backing of, oh, let's just play the verse again, and instead of vocals, there'll be a guitar solo this time, or let's play the chorus again, and instead of vocals, there'll be a guitar solo this time. Um, so... If anything, I would say that there's more wasted potential in that kind of thing than there is in a band like Wagaki Band who have the big arrangements. However, there was an interesting point that was brought up, which I thought was uh, quite, uh, quite poignant, which was the idea of really being able to hear, like I, say, like I was saying originally, the impact, having the power of the music, having each note have more of a connection to you as the listener and it is true with a smaller band size with that more direct feel and even with like i said the aforementioned guitar solos you're getting more of a direct connection between you and the musician so um another example we brought up alongside bandmate was glim spanky much simpler band um with smaller size you know simpler arrangement i know they've used a lot of session musicians i believe or at least they layer up their um, instruments 
they're basically a two-piece. Um, and yet, yeah, fantastically, fantastically tangible sound. The singer's voice really, you, you, you feel it. It's got a real grit to it. Um, and the guitarist is just, you know, brilliant. The way he plays, again, you almost, you can feel, you can hear every contact on the strings. Um, so that kind of more of an extreme version of what we were discussing with Bandmade. I think that when I hear things like that, I do agree that there is a quality to that type of music that you cannot really get in something like Wagaki Band. Um, you know, when you've got that many members, let's have a sip of the old Budatama coffee. When you've got that many members, it's hard for any one member. Sorry for that cut. This time, simply, the battery just died. So I'm back in the room, charging batteries and various things. I will continue what I was saying, and I will try to get through to the end of this. So, as I was saying, in a band like Wagaki Band, it's harder for any one individual member to have, um, to really connect to the listener as much, to have such a tangible quality. Um, you feel kind of more like you're standing back, like I say, listening to an orchestra. Um, you don't quite get the close personal feel that you would do. And I think this was also accented rather interesting during the, um, the virus uh, lockdowns. Um, a lot of musicians were doing sessions and Yuka Suzuhana did a fantastic session, a uh, few live sessions where she was just talking to the camera, singing and playing piano. And it was quite, even though I, I knew her talent, it was quite interesting and amazing to hear just the pureness of her singing and playing piano and that it, it felt like suddenly it was interesting to hear her music with more of that personal directness that sort of closeness like you're in the same room so i do understand that there is also that degree that the bigger the music the more you feel like you're you know more you feel distanced from it so um i i was trying to see these comparisons and i do i do definitely see it so i think these are two valid things i would admit that myself usually um i like music as I think most people would do, most people generally like music, I like music that goes in both of those directions. However, perhaps my bias, my hashtag no bias, but my bias probably leans towards bigger arrangements. I like the complexity of a big arrangement and having your ears really caught up by all of that and getting really into um, you know, the hearing all of the various things working around each other. That's just a personal preference of mine. But I totally understand therefore that those are two differences. I don't think either of them is a waste of potential though. I think that both both of them just have very different approaches. Both of them can be squandered. Um, you can have, like I say, you can have uh, more direct music where simply, you know, the, 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 the arrangement is just not enough. There seems to be some arrangement, like I say, a guitar solo where the rest of the band just go around and play the same exact same thing they play in the chorus or verse with no attempt to mold what they're playing around the guitar solo itself. Or um, you can get more complicated arrangements where it's just a mess and nothing really cuts through, nothing really has any personality, it's just too much happening at once. So both can be beneficial and squandered, but I do think both of them have their advantages. And I think that um, Bandmade and Wagaki Band are both examples of those things being done well. Um, so I think both of them are creditable for being such fantastic examples of that. And one of the interesting things that shows that is what happened when both of them have kind of got in the realm of trying each other's game. Now, I first of all would say this in regards to Band Made with the band Michael EP, which was, I, I was really excited to hear that when I first went around to review it and uh, on the previous channel before I got closed down, um, when I first went around to review that, I was really excited. Like I said, I've always had this love for the mixture of Japanese instruments with contemporary music. I think it just works. So I was really excited to hear that. And I must admit to me, it sounded like I say, what happens when it goes wrong? It sounded like a mess. Um, it didn't have that core quality of impact, of directness that they usually have. And it felt like things were being layered where they didn't belong. I mean, you had songs like Gion Cho, obviously that worked more in its own right, but none of the, they all sounded a bit messy. They all sounded like the girls were having fun, but they were doing something that just didn't seem to suit their style. Um, and the same could be say, said, I think, when Wagaki Band did the song Ignite. I know a lot of people like this song. Um, it's not that I dislike it in the same way that I don't dislike um, the band Michael EP. The problem is, is that I just felt that once they stripped down and went for a more direct sound, um, unlike the Yuko Suzuhana live streams, which was a very different thing, but when they went for that direct rock sound, it just felt like they didn't know how to deliver the impact. The impact didn't come across to me. It didn't feel like it had 
it had punch, but not in the way that a lot of the contemporaries, of which if you're doing that kind of rock music, you've got a lot of contemporaries suddenly. Um, they just didn't feel like they were able to achieve that, like it was something that they were naturally very geared towards. Now, this is not to say that these bands are um, limited. Um, they can, both bands have shown their ability to be very diverse in what they do. Um, you look at uh, Wagaki band have the have jazzy numbers like uh, synchronicity, I think it's called, or synchronized. I always remember, forget which version of the word synchronicity or synchronized that is, but that song. Um, they got more ballads, they got rockier songs as well. Um, th they are very good at being adaptable, and like I say, Bandmade as well have done some interesting things. I still defend Start Over, I think that was a really interesting, good little pop song. Um, alongside their rockier songs, they got thrashier songs, they got ballads. Both bands can adapt, but they have a core writing ethic. Um, with Bandmade, it is the knowledge of how to construct songs around that sort of you know, band, you know, traditional band formula, uh, where you've got like you know, two guitars, bass, drums, um, and a singer. Wagaki Band is where they know how to construct things which are thickly layered. So like I say, I, I just think they're both very good in their own right at doing what they do. So. What I'm really interested to find out about now is, um, I just, I just to cover actually, in relation to both Ignite and Band Michael, the big thing there is that, like I said, I didn't dislike either of them, but notably I haven't really gone back and listened to either of them again. I think I probably listened to the Band Michael EP, EP once or twice since I reviewed it um, about a year ago, um, and Ignite, I think I've heard it a couple of times when it comes on on a playlist, but haven't really exactly dived back towards it. Kind of says a lot. Um, they're not unlikable, they just don't work in the way that the majority of the band's other materials do work. So like I said, what I'm really interested to see now is I want to do with these videos, I want to know what you guys think as always. But I want to know, has my opinion, has what I said here in any way changed what you think? Has it given you a different perspective? Um, what do you prefer? Um, like I said, I haven't. I kind of like both, and I think all music fans kind of like both in some degree. I would probably bias towards bigger arrangements and sort of complex um, layering of sounds as being preferable to me. I think if I were to defend that, I would probably say that's more because there is more you can do with that. Being direct is in its way is slightly limiting, I think. Um, but you get that nice uh, middle ground, like I say, bands like Bandmade, where you've got just enough members for it to be interesting. I think some other bands, like, um, I'm trying to think of a good example now, but um, you have some smaller bands like uh, The Peggies are a band I really enjoy, but The Peggies, notably, um, you feel a lot of the time like they're really making an effort to make their songs as interesting and different as possible, because obviously they got less to work with as being a free piece. Um, so what that time the memory card filled up. So I'm just going to end this one by saying the usual things. Check out our social medias. Tell me what you think. Like, subscribe. Let's start a conversation about this because I'm really hoping these videos do start some conversation. And hopefully I'll see you in Japan soon for the next one of these. But for now, ciao, ciao. It's going to cut again, isn't it?